Miyamoto Musashi was likely the best swordsman in history and was also a philosopher, writer, artist, Buddhist, ronin, and wandering samurai without a lord or teacher. His exact origins as well as his birth date are a mystery. According to best estimations, he was born in Harima province in about 1584. His father Miyamoto Benesuk was a rice farmer and a swordsman Shinmen Munise. There is debate if Shinmen was even his biological father, and who his mother was is even more mysterious. Welcome to my channel. There is a small reminder before starting our discussion. If this is the information you are really interested in, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications in any newly uploaded video, and stay till the end of the video so that you don't miss any interesting videos like this. Now let's continue our discussion. Early life Musashi was raised by his uncle starting at the age of seven, and as a result of his restless nature, he finally turned to the life of the sword, Bushido, and Buddhism, and became one of history's greatest fighters. Champions have been represented throughout history as upright people who would battle on behalf of a group, army, school, or philosophy to settle disputes against opponents. Instead of blood had to be spilt by countless warriors on both sides, a champion was selected by each side to settle the battle. One such champion was Miyamoto, who traveled all around Japan to battle the best fighters and became renowned for his strategies, diplomacy, morals, and spirit. In modern Japan, he is revered as a Kensai or sword saint. At any given time, only one person may have this title. Over the course of his lifetime, Miyamoto would win 60 of his fights, he participated in six major battles, including the key battle of Sekigahara at age 17. He invented and perfected the two-sword knight Nietzsche RY method. In this technique, the swordsman simultaneously holds a long sword and a companion sword, such as a katana and a wakazashi. After Yoshioka RY was defeated by Musashi, this technique first appeared. His next route led him to Nara, the old seat of the emperor, and Fujiwara's, where the center of Buddhism was seated in Japan. Early Carrier Musashi studied Buddhism and swordsmanship for a long time. He was a skilled calligrapher, sculptor, and artist. He also had architectural skills, according to records. Additionally, he doesn't appear to have used any additional frills or aesthetic concerns in his battle strategy. This was probably due to his real-life combat experience, although in his later life, Musashi followed the more artistic paths. He made calligraphy, different sunbrush paintings, and metal and wood creations. He emphasizes that samurai should be familiar with different professions even in the Book of Five Rings. The Four Go Houses The Four Go Houses were four major schools of Go instituted, supported, and controlled by the state at the beginning of the Tokugawa Shogunate. Whoever was the best Go player received the title of Godoroko who mediated the four houses approved rank promotions and was a direct tutor to the shogun. The ring has no beginning or end and reminds one of the old Durabara symbols that can be found in many different civilizations, which also reminds us how the Book of Five Rings got its name. Ground, water, fire, wind, and the void are also known as the illusionary nature of worldly things. The Book of Five Rings may also be a metaphor for battling across the five-dimensional planes, the fifth being the most esteemed of these five or the realm of spirits and higher consciousnesses. While demonstrating the practical application of his school of sword fighting, Musashi continues to describe the five attitudes, which have everything to do with time, space, and gravity, or the three-dimensional reality we live in. Cuts to the higher, middle, lower, left, and right represent the five attitudes, the Shimabara Rebellion The Shimabara Rebellion, which he took part in at the age of 53, was one of the few significant wars in which Musashi is known to have taken part. Catholic rebels supported by Ronin and Portuguese traders revolted against the Tokugawa and Dutch, led and helped by Musashi who served as one of their field commanders. Rebels declared severe tax increases and statements made by Daimyo Matsukar Katsuyi, who strongly hated Christianity and raised taxes broadly in order to build his new Shimabara palace. Catholic rebels turtled in Hara Castle while the Tokugawa-backed Daimyo received over 125,000 troops to squash the rebellion. A Catholic rebel reportedly dropped a rock at the Buddhist Musashi, causing him to fall off his horse. The rebels were put to death after months of fighting, and the Dutch showed loyalty to the Tokugawa, thus setting their form trade monopoly with Japan. 
The history of religion for power, control, and money is inextricably entangled in Japanese history, let alone world history. Tokugawa saw Catholicism as a threat to a unified Japanese spirit and decided that a hybrid of Buddhism and Shintoism was the best spiritual path for Japan going forward. Organized religion would be tossed in the air again during the Meiji Restoration and the overthrow of the Tokugawa where Western organized religions again would make a re-entry into Japan. During the final stages of his life, the ronin philosopher, artist, and swordsman Musashi finished the renowned Book of Five Rings, a classic work on skillful artistry. It was when Musashi finally revealed his real name and offered his teachings. Throughout the latter weeks of his life, Musashi asserted that he was a direct descendant of the powerful Fujiwara family, who controlled high and air governance through their control of regional offices, institutionalized religion, and clever marriage arrangements involving Fujiwara's daughters. Fujiwara of the time acted on behalf of child emperors and empresses until they were of age. This influence continued up until the Meiji era, when the Bushido system was abandoned as a means of government and the merchant class exchanged swords for the imported western guns that swiftly pushed them to the top of the social scale, thus transforming Japan forever. Guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks for being to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tell us what you think about this video below in the comment section.